Otherwise, I just need to see body voice. Which is a side, but I think it's a side. Yeah. Yeah. I wish to I wish to look at the book. Look at the Zoom people. Oh, I don't think they're in just here. Oh no, they're in now. Open the floodgates. Oh god, hello, that's me. Not everyone. I know these people. Look at you all. Can they hear me? Yes. Ah, so good. Hello. All right. Got a lot of Zoom friends tonight. All right. So thank you so much for joining us this frosty evening. We've got the heaters on, so I hope you're all nice and warm. Let me know if the top of your head burns off and I can turn them off. <laughs> um, I'm so pleased to be here with you all tonight for the launch of Ray White's new poetry collection, exactly as I am. Um, I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land, which we're currently on here in Mianjin, Brisbane, um, as well as the traditional owners of the lands which are all joining us from on Zoom tonight. I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Sovereignty has never been ceded. It always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Um, just some housekeeping for all of you tonight. If you need the bathrooms, we'll use the ones inside tonight, um, just upstairs behind the counter. Um, and if you haven't purchased the book already, you can do so afterwards um, up at the counter. And on Zoom, we'll type a link into the chat box where you can purchase it online. Um, and then afterwards, we'll move back inside the shop where you can mingle, grab another drink, um, and also get your copy of the book signed. Um, and finally, if you could just take a moment to pop your friends on silent, that would be greatly appreciated. Now. Now, Ray's publisher, Aviva, um, is so sorry that she can't be here tonight um, and has just asked me to say a few words on her behalf. So she writes, firstly, UQP would like to thank the incomparable Avid Reader Bookstore uh, for hosting this event. Independent bookshops are the beating heart of the literary community and deserve our support. Her words, not mine. <laughs> um, thanks also to all of you for coming tonight to celebrate the one and only Bray White and their incredible new collection, Exactly As I Am. We at UQP are so proud to publish Ray and to watch their development as a poet and author. This new collection builds on Ray's wonderful debut, Milk Tea, continuing to bring their lived experience as a non-binary transgender person into focus through formally inventive, vibrant poems, which themselves consider the restrictions of form. Ray takes poetry into new thematic areas, especially in the innovative examination of the construction, teaching and policing of gender and of the experiences of non-binary and trans people. There, there is pain and rage and joy across this collection. It is a very moving and poignant reading experience. There are also some wonderfully playful poems and many clever uses of form, including some that certainly challenge the typesetter. <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> the early reception um, to Exactly As I Am has been glowing. One reviewer wrote, Exactly As I Am is an accessible and engrossing read, demonstrating the possibilities of how poetry can convey the realities of queer and trans people. Congratulations from all of us at UQP. They are joining us on Zoom. Um, exactly As I Am is a special, necessary and impressive collection, a call to arms that will play an important role in shifting hearts and minds. Now I'd like to throw it over to Marlo, who will be taking things from here. Marlo Spikert is the facilitator of Avid Breeders Queer Literature Book Club and specialises in the queer young adult section uh, next door at Where the Wild Things Are. She's also a teacher of reading at the local primary school where her favourite experience is still helping to announce and explain the result of the marriage equality yes vote to a grade one class in the context of a maths lesson about data collection. <laughs> she loves queer literature of all kinds for all ages and has enjoyed donating some and also her time to Open Doors Youth Service, knowing from personal experience how affirming it is to see yourself represented in books. A round of applause for our wonderful speakers. Thank you. Um, firstly, congratulations, Ray, on your stunning second collection of poems. It's really impressive and it's so dynamic. And it doesn't surprise me at all that it's as generous as you are. And um, I wanted to um, kick off with just a tiny little quote, if that's okay, from a beautiful poem called I Am Myself. Ray White writes, I am myself as self, but myself in motion. And I think it's amazing because you really bring everyone along with you 
throughout yeah. this beautiful collection and and the way that you do that is just beautiful particularly with the crafting of this book this book is um well this book holds five exquisite sections and i'd love uh for you to kind of explain your thinking behind the sections if that's okay yes i uh was I had an interview, I've had a number of radio interviews, which is very flattering. Uh, and the first time this was asked of me, I went, oh, I've, I don't, um, I have to articulate this. <laughs> so I've got it down now. <laughs> um, I, I forgot I'm very loud on microphones. Uh, so there's, uh, yeah, there's a number of sections. We've got exclude, um, which sort of yeah, the poems that, look at uh, you know exclusion discrimination we've got exist which are poems uh, that talk about you know more of the existence of um, non-binary and trans people uh, and the way in which we you know continue to uh, prevail despite oh I think my microphone has been turned down yeah no, it's just like a raven <laughs> no that's entirely fair that's entirely fair I say speaking louder um, <laughs> Uh, then we've got Exclaim, uh, which is about speaking loudly. No, it's about, uh, <laughs> it's, it's about, you know, it is, it's about, you know, using your voice. It's about, um, you know, really, uh, talking about who you are and, you know, not being afraid of that. Um, Exhale, which really is just kind of the sexy section. Um, but it is, you know, more, it's also about, uh, you know, breath, it's about finding the people that you love and the people, you know, within your community and then exalt, which is the final uh, section of the book, which sort of is about mostly about um, gender euphoria, which I think we're going to talk about later. And I think that's something that a lot of books don't really touch on and it's something that I definitely wanted to include because there's, you know, a lot of books that talk about, um, you know, trans people's lived experiences uh, that are, you know, incredibly traumatic and incredibly um, depressing and sure, but that's not, you know, that's not something that I want to, you know, take away from, but I also think that there's an incredible amount of euphoria and joy and happiness and just, you know, this most incredible feeling of, of knowing who you are and you're finding your community. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's basically the book in a nutshell, as well as lots of, lots of strange little form poems, which... Yeah, definitely confused the typesetters. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. That's beautiful just to get a kind of a picture of sort of the arc that we all go through mm. with you. And, um, you know, I love, I really, really loved the culminating section, Exalt. Mm. And I think it does, um, yeah, I would, I'd love to jump to talk about, uh, to talking about gender euphoria now and, um, and I love what you've just said because there's some another simply two words in another poem that kind of took my breath away as well. Um, trans truth, I think yeah. that's just really beautiful. It's so succinct and so um, just perfect, really. Um, and gender euphoria is just gosh, the way that you've rendered it, it's so visceral and beautiful and triumphant. It's really gorgeous. Um, yeah, and I, I, if you don't mind, I'd love to highlight a couple of um, lines too from another beautiful poem called um, You Hold a Lot of Tension in Your Body. And the lines simply are the hum of respectful voices, they, ray, they, ray. It's very convenient they, they rhyme. Oh, it's so good. I don't like writing poetry until <laughs> until it's uh, abuse to me. No, okay. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. Um, and would you like to share with us um, more about your experiences of gender euphoria mm. and why this is important to convey? Yeah, I think the first time I was struck by a book that actually conveyed gender euphoria was um, Alison Evans' uh, Euphoria Kids and hopefully they're online right now. Um, but it was a book that is exactly what it says in the title. It was incredibly euphoric, it was incredibly 
beautiful and it wasn't just you know a trans person looking in the mirror and being like yeah I've got this I look great which is fine that's also an excellent and important experience um but you know I think there's so much to do with community there's so much to do with um you know finding yourself you know amongst people who are like you there's so much you know to do with found family um and that's definitely something that I wanted to to put in the book and sort of as the the five sections are kind of like a narrative arc almost um you know have that as the kind of the conclusion because I didn't want it to be like oh this is sad it's sadder but I wanted it to end kind of with it's happy because you know it's, it's, I've read some pretty we've read some pretty sad books at book group and um I didn't I didn't want to be that person um <laughs> But yeah, uh, I don't know what I was going to say. No. Um, yeah, I think, and also it sort of touches on um, you were talking there about trans truth, and I think that's really interesting as well. Like, um, there's so much truth and untruth in the book as well, which I think we'll touch on later with um, you know fiction versus nonfiction and that kind of thing. But yeah, in terms of, of gender euphoria, like it's something that. I really hope a lot more works kind of um, look at rather than, you know, trans stories being it's an incredible struggle and it's awful. And I'm not saying that those stories aren't ones that should be told, but also that there's, there's so much joy and there's so much, you know, incredibly beautiful experiences um, that, you know, you can have as someone who's trans and you know, hopefully those, those poems kind of, um, yeah, I articulate that. And I was like, if, feel free to like remind me if you're like, please bring this because I don't remember anything. <laughs> well, it's interesting because um, I, I also just wanted to say that your these poems talking about gender euphoria are mm. completely sort of uplifting and and so you can completely succeed in that regard so well done it's, it's I really do a whole book on that just 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 yeah. gender euphoria poems um or just euphoric poems in general like oh it's God. a sad time life is a bit stinky with this plague let's write a happy book of poems oh gosh do it i think and i think we would all um <laughs> Or just totally benefit from that. Yeah, please do. Um, well, you know, um, did you want to uh, read a poem now that mm. might um, sort of talk to the idea of gender euphoria for people to kind of get a sense of your gorgeous voice? Oh, so I, I thought you meant like physically, and I'm like, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I understand your literary word voice. Yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. Um, I think the one that I flagged was you might have been. Do, 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 was it? Oh, look, look at this. So prepared. Do you want the three different? Oh, yeah. I thought it was right because I think I decided this one would be fun because it's comedic. Um, and I do, I think we're going to talk about that later as well if we have time. It's like the way that I enjoy playing with comedy. Um, you know, because if you can't laugh, what can you do? <laughs> uh, so this poem is called. The three genders, women, men, consumerism. <laughs> Gifts for her. Delicate, pretty, dainty, charming, girly female jewellery, up to 50% off. Our new black, sleek electric razor, only $2.99, will make you instantly somehow manlier, more ripped, confident, heroic, virile, versatile. Use it to subdue your pubes or mince all those carrots. Only two bucks a kilo. But she uses it to shave her legs, then deliberately combs up her foot, severing the ornamental anklet. Tiny silver links catch against titanium like a gravel jangle in Sunday's motor mower. Later, he uses the razor to prune his underarms, the anklets, trinkets replacing his pit hair and he looks like Christmas. Globes suspended, weighty and glinting. Winking, she says, you look good. Dazzled, he says, I feel golden. <laughs> oh, that is beautiful. Oh, um, yeah, what a lovely way to finish that. Oh, I feel golden, it's gorgeous. Um, and that actually leads me to my next point, just about how kind of, 
golden it would feel for people to see themselves in this beautiful work work that you have so generously shared with everyone like seeing yourself represented in literature is so it's so affirming Mm -hmm. and everyone needs that everyone has the right for that um, Mm -hmm. to, to to experience that so thank you also for for sharing that with with everyone and yeah because your um your life fullness is just so powerful on the page and that's mm. like that's, that's <clears throat> very exciting um yes because uh some other elements that really stand mm. up and stand out are your defiance mm. amazing and your resilience and i think these are <laughs> would be really inspiring things for anyone who picks up this book. Um, so I actually just wanted to ask what does um, community and connection really mean for you mm. as a queer person, as a trans person, as yeah. a beautiful writer, as an artist? Um, I mean, I think I was, I was going to, I don't want to, I feel like quoting the back of the book sounds weird, but um, <laughs> it, it is it is referencing a poem, but um, it's, basically this which is poems leading towards you holding out their hand offering you a connection community and an emboldened call to action and I feel like in terms of community like the language that we use um you know like especially terms like non-binary you know that kind of thing is, is very it's not only about the self but it's so incredibly community driven and it's something that you know people will see that and go oh hey that's me and I hope that you know people will see themselves in this work or or even in the spaces in between um you know in the white space and the bit where they go well that's not me but it's sort of kind of adjacent to me um and that yeah that look i mean honestly <clears throat> i really do hope that it, it means that more people will write poetry like i think the more you know lgbtqa plus people who write poetry um and who are able to kind of you know connect with words that way like I think that's so incredibly powerful and so incredibly important because you know it allows people to um use their words and express who they are and um you know not just work through things for catharsis but then you know also just kind of um oh, I don't know speak their mind and it means that there's more canon like you know when I first saw myself in a book. It was another one of Alison's books, and that was so long ago. And I was I was thirty or something. Like that's not that's not good enough history. I'm afraid. Like we need more incredible canon. We need so many more books, not just like mine, because it's not all about me. Like it's about so many other people. And like we need more books that really express like trans and queer and non-binary and LGBT plus people like we just I really hope that people yeah just write more and because you know that's so incredibly inspiring because you know like one book will reach like a bunch of people and they'll write more and then they'll just spread yeah like a virus um, yeah. <laughs> a happy virus um so yeah community to me is uh Making more people poets. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but also, yes. <laughs> I love that idea of a call to action. Like, just you're literally inspiring people to use their own voice and, um, and yeah, to um, yeah. extend and receive those connections. And yeah. Amazing. Because it's, and I think this is something that I say all the time, and it's not like just me being like, oh, I'm really humble and selfless. Like, no, I genuinely believe that there's no point in me having this book out if I'm not bringing other people up with me and if I'm not you know um making sure that you know other voices you know are heard like I think that's so so important like I run a journal for that reason um so yeah like there's this I feel like there's no point in, in everyone kind of having a nice time and having a book published without there being like I don't know you gotta you gotta help out your friends and um you know, your, your fellow queers. I was going to say your friends and your enemies. Don't help your enemies. <laughs> I'm also just keeping an eye on the time as well. Oh, good. Um, yeah, I we're have... okay. Um, <laughs> one word you mentioned in there uh, was catharsis. And I think um, 
actually to quote another one of your poems, uh, a really powerful poem called Paint Me Over, you write, am I trope or trouble to you? Is my portraiture distraction or abstraction? Find it hard to decide between two readings? Same, babe, same. I just think that's an exquisite little uh, uh, the, the, uh, stanza. Uh, the Sta yeah, stanza exit. Yeah, yeah. And um, I uh, was just wondering if you would mind sharing with us how poetry does provide a process of, for you to, you know, further understand yourself and and that sort of cathartic release that you, you mentioned there. Yeah, I think I wrote a piece for. I think it was Archer a, a while ago about this. And yeah, um, I also mentioned it in an interview recently uh, where I said, yeah, poetry, it's really good, it's cheaper than therapy. Uh, <laughs> actually go seek therapy if you need, but also poetry is incredibly, um, you know, fantastic for that catharsis because, you know, it does allow you to sort of, I think like one of the most interesting things about poetry as like a medium is that it does allow you to really pinpoint um, things and sort of look at things in uh, a very, it's almost like you put a bunch of words through a sieve and, you know, you're left with this incredibly like granular kind of um, intense, very, uh, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, but it's, it's very like, uh, yeah, just very dense, like uh, language. And I think that sort of allows people to, to pinpoint, you know, what they might be feeling, um, what they might want to explore. Um, and so, yeah, like I, I definitely recommend poetry for, for catharsis. Um, and it's something that, that like with a lot of the poems that I've written, like I've worked through things that maybe they, were, they weren't necessarily issues that were, say, my personal issues, but they were, you know, issues or things that I saw uh, in the news that were distressing to me. Um, you know, things that friends of mine had experienced. So it sort of allows you to kind of, um, you know, really, yeah, look at things, um, you know, through that kind of, that looking glass, I guess. Um, and yeah, you know, at the end of the day though, uh, please do go to therapy if you need to, but it is, I, I do, think, I do think it is a form of art therapy almost. Like, yes. you know, art therapy is something that, you know, a lot of people find incredible benefit in um why not also poetry um and I know that like when I've done workshops with young people as well they're so incredibly responsive um and they have such a beautiful time with writing like sort of cathartic poetry and it's just absolutely beautiful to see or only are they producing something that is you know possibly even a publishable work like they're incredible children are incredible like you know this like you know they're amazing and it so it's not only that, but it's not necessarily for that. Like I feel like poetry doesn't have to be something that is for an audience. It can just also just be for you or for your friends or, you know, yeah, like it doesn't, I feel like it doesn't necessarily have to always have that who's your audience kind of aim. Because um, <clears throat> then, you know, um, it's not like I want to see, you know, I obviously want to see more people like we get published but at the same time. Um, Sometimes a poem is just a diary entry as well. So yes, yeah, yeah like you, you <laughs> being your own first mm. audience. Mm. Yeah, yeah, mm. that's really powerful. Yeah, really mm. beautiful. Um, would you like to read? Yeah, I was me over for us. I was like, I knew you were going to ask that. Oh. What? What page is it on? Twenty-two. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're very good here. Um, um, this poem, interestingly, is also one that I uh, see twenty-two. Fantastic! There it is. Um, I was commissioned uh, for Walls Gallery, I think it was, um, and they that was in the Gold Coast, uh, and this was for James Bath and Tiza Hart's um, exhibition. Um, assuming a surface and it was it was really amazing to see there's four poems in here from that commission and it's amazing to see like um, how, how 
it's a possum. <laughs> oh gosh, is it actually? I was going to say, is there actually a possum coming to my book launch? Because it's so. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm leaving goodbye. <laughs> I, I want to hang out with this possum. It's not a possum. It's, yeah, it's just something I'm taking out the garbage. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, spoiled again. Um. Gosh, what on earth was I saying? Uh yes. So it's. It, yeah, I was going to say it phrases poetry. Yeah, it's a poetry that um sort of looks at artwork um and i think that's always really interesting because you know not only are you looking through the lens of the artwork itself um and you know tying into that the artist's intentions um and also bringing you know something of yours to the table and it kind of blends this fiction and non-fiction mm -hmm. kind of really nicely um but yes i will read uh paint me over and possum if you are out there you are more than welcome to some seat at the front for you i will i will flip out if there is a creature that comes in here i'll be so happy best book launch ever um all right this is paint me over i suspect the poised surface of me is a post photo nightmare to you I watch you watch me bend over, the creak and heat of my back unrelenting. Could you commodify this? The pink of me as I slink and relax, subjectified in the shadows. Cold leaves palming the back of my neck. Tell me, am I trope or trouble to you? Is my portraiture distraction or abstraction? Finding hard to decide between two readings. Same, babe, same. Some days I feel like the only way to transcend is to ask you to oil me up, spittle me with colourful flecks, dismantle and curve my degendered bones. God, just 3D print me new ones crafted from secondhand canvases. Just peel and paint me over already. So both our biases are blemish cleansed. Yes, yes, I think I'm finally ready. Um, I just, I love it, phrases uh, and plastic poetry, which is poetry um, that uh, is like draws on or is about uh, real or imagined uh, pieces of art. And um, yeah, I, I just, I'm just rereading this and going, I can see that piece of art. I can see it. Like, I can see the whole exhibition just in that one, that one image. Um, so that's really beautiful. There's actually, I was going to do a plug for another. It says an ecrastic uh, writing club, actually, that's um, just started up at Museum of Brisbane. So if anyone wants to get some art on and write poetry, everyone, um, uh, you could go to that. That sounds thrilling. Really, should probably my own events. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, and I love that we just shared some revelry with a maybe possum, maybe not. Um, can I also say to everyone that there are some stunning poems in this collection about beautiful local animals that you encounter? Oh gosh, they're they're incredible. Um, and yeah, it goes to a great strength of your poetry in that how evocative they are. They really take us to these times and places of your, <laughs> of your you know, unique experiences and they're, they're really transportative, really beautiful. And, um, you know, like there was, there was one poem that I thought was incredibly skillful because it completely evoked COVID lockdowns without mentioning its name whatsoever. I don't think I actually said COVID at all in the book, I don't think. Yeah. yeah. But it's that it doesn't mean that um, this moment in time is, mm. is overlooked or anything. It's completely conjured in these really creative ways. Um, I was like, should I read that? Well, absolutely. Yeah, there's a number that you could choose from because these these poems that really do evoke, you know, our Mianjin place right here, and it's it's just beautiful. I I would herald that if if you felt like reading reading one of these. I was like, I was like, you know what? I, 
it's going to sit tonight. Well, can I jump in and read two? No, we'll see how we go. Um, I yeah, thank you for that. Like I do, um, like a lot of the, um, I guess like autobiographical like kind of elements definitely like stem from yeah like thing things that I see outside my window um you know and I I love um so I love possums I love birds I'm such a huge such a huge bird nerd and you know there's they're just always going to be there I think it's one of the reasons that I don't ever really want to move from Brisbane it's because of the bush stone curlew like I know that there's somewhere else out there but what about my ones directly scream into my ear every night? Like I want, I want you, know, I'll miss them. <laughs> um, but yeah, I could, <clears throat> I'm like, what could I read? Oh yeah. Oh God. That's, okay. I'm going to read. I know you, you referenced nature as healing, but I think I might read what have you done? Um, and yeah. not unlike love because I really like those. <clears throat> Beautiful. In revisiting this book, because um, uh, I'm currently writing a book that is surprise about a possum, um, and it's a, a middle grade book, and so I'm focusing quite a lot on that, and so I did actually have to flip through this book and go, well, what did I write again? <laughs> Very professional. Um, so this one is What Have You Done? Uh, and this... Uh, references the the bushfires um, look honestly that we have almost continuously at this point. Um, <clears throat> what have you done? I'm windowsill watchful as they scuttle to pack suitcases, boxes, green bags, stuffles, all spilling over warmly like waterfalls. We could do with the rain. Sky hazes red with thick brimmed clouds as their breathing hardens and hastens, running from car to door and back again. Forearm lengths of forehead sweat, wiped and flicked to floor. Sharpened sunlight folds through my window and bathes my leaves orange. What is leaving when you're simply left behind? Because just like that, no more bags. We forgot the plant, someone shouts over the sirens. Door ajar for a second's hesitation before, leave it, just leave it. It'll fend for itself. Um, I also am a huge fan of plants uh, and think about what they're feeling a lot, as you can gather. <laughs> um, oh, and this one is incredibly... Um, so currently where I live, there's a lot of construction sites. So this is actually very directly about that, but also it didn't actually happen. I didn't do this. I promise I'm not a criminal. <laughs> uh, not unlike love. It's something to do with impermanence, with a flight swift slice of limb from log, bone from branch, about the smallest snips it took to ground you. It's something not unlike possession, about the fell from falling, freedom from free fall, the quick cleave of chainsaws and corellas screeching treeless. If evictions and moratorium, then does private equal public? And what might it mean to grow autonomy? In the hot bask of afternoon sun, I kneel to count your notches and tally your timeline. And you tell me, we could be happy here. And so we dig and turn, plant parsley and basil, chives and mint. We laugh at aphids, leaf hoppers, landlords and other pests. <laughs> we knock down the gates and the for sale sign. We let the sun in. Thank you for sharing those. I, I agree they completely and incredibly vividly bring to life um, our, our place right here. So thank you very much. That's amazing. Um, and something you just touched on in there, um, I love, um, because I think a lot of us might think Firstly, that poetry tends to be non-fiction. You know, a, a poet sort of writes about their place in, in the world, um, 
you know, from um, from sort of a truth perspective. Um, and yes, obviously, you we have already heard that you do this and yeah. like very keenly. Yes, yes, vibrantly and um, with agency, which I think is really important. Um, but I also sense, because you kind of just mm. mentioned it, that you also rebel against mm. the idea of um, nonfiction poetry and mm. you do revel in, um, in fiction within your poetry, which I think is really yes. exciting. Would you like to talk yeah. about that? Yeah. I, it, look, it's something that I, I, I bring up a lot mostly because, like, um, I had some questions that were um, about one of the poems where someone goes, oh, that moment where you you and your sister did this, and I went, yeah, I'm an only child. Um, but, <laughs> but that's not to say that some elements in there weren't truth, like there's truth and untruth and fiction and non-fiction, and I think, like, I really enjoy, because, I mean, a lot of this poem is, a lot of this poem, a lot of this book is a, a narrative arc um, that I've kind of, you know, tried to, to devise. I think it's... It's something that people would look at and go, oh, yeah, everything there happened to them. Um, and, you know, I was going to say, there's so, there's so many, like, um, quite, like, science fiction-y ones in there and, like, fantastical poems. I'm like, that didn't, definitely didn't happen, trust me. <laughs> like, and that's a, that's a wild example as opposed to, you know, some of the other stuff that is, you know, it has little, little snippets of things that happened to me. It has, you know animals that I saw, you know, things that people said to me maybe, or you know, whatever the case may be, locations. But then there's other bits that aren't. And, like, I quite enjoy the idea of messing with that because, like, I think, yeah, as you said, when we think about poetry often it's like, yes, it is definitely nonfiction. It is about the author. Um, the author is not dead. This is, in fact, a memoir. And it's like, well, no. Uh, that being said, though, I had shot myself kind of in the foot by saying that it uh, rises from my experience. I'm like, yeah, it rises, but it's, it's a plant with lots of depth and lots of layers. Um, but, yeah, no, I really do enjoy, like, kind of playing with that, and I think it's something that even as I sort of explore more writing more memoir stuff at the moment as well. Um, I'm writing like 20 things at once. Um, it's something that I, even when I do write pieces that are incredibly, uh, but they are from my life, they're actual things that definitely, most definitely happen word for word. But there's still these little bits where I'm like, oh, but if I just said that, it would make it more interesting. <laughs> or if, you know, there's, and these are kind of things where I just sort of colour and paint and kind of go, oh, I, I could just make this slightly different or or you relive something like you read over and like a draft or something and you go yeah is that how it happened I remember it differently but past me wrote it down like this and then you'll read it out to someone and they'll go no it didn't happen like that at all so, oh. so yeah which is another thing that I think we might have discussed with book group um some of the books is that like a lot of the the way in which you know perspective comes into it and um, you know, whoever is writing the narrative, whoever is the author, brings so much to the table when it comes to um, comes to the work. Like often, it's not just about memory and how memory is so incredibly um, messy, but also the fact that you know our perspective is so incredibly messy as well, and the way that we view things is so. I mean, at the end of the day, egotistical and kind of you know, um, I guess, yeah, focused focused on you know, how, how we see things, like, so yeah, it's fascinating, love it, also I'm just looking at the time, I'm like, yeah, we're on track. <laughs> um, yeah, that's really beautiful, because I do think uh, you are splendidly creative, and I, I think in your very being, things just amalgamate for you in this incredible artistry, and, and you're able to produce wonders like this and I think it is just a you know bringing together so if there's something sarcastic like it's basically because um I, whenever I think of writing an actual full fiction adult book I'm like oh it's really tiring what if I write like <laughs> hundreds of poems and like both fiction and non-fiction and jam it all into a book there we go got it yes and, and you know that's so your, that's your agency you can do that absolutely yeah. Absolutely. Someone might not publish it, but I can do that. <laughs> Which I agree. Like, on that note, 
you know, write whatever you want. Be, yeah. be, write whatever you want. Be happy. It doesn't matter if someone publishes it or not. But. Yeah, amazing. The takeaway is write poetry. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I just also just wanted to highlight um, that while your poetry like does take us to some amazing poignant places and also humorous places um yes from the like the private intimacies of your beautiful relationships through to kind of public discriminations mm -hmm. um and it's and it's also um vital uh what underpins all of that is how accessible it is for all of us readers and we can really learn so much and and so much is illuminated by your beautiful poetry um and i just wanted to ask is accept, uh, accessibility um like an important philosophy for you and um and then like <coughs> your humor and your playfulness is your playful language an essential element for your kind of literary voice yeah i think that's really interesting because I think they both kind of play in together as well. Like um, at no point, so, you know, in terms of like poetry that, you know, I probably read at, at high school, um, no shade if there's any teachers that I had on Zoom right now. Um, but a lot of it was, was quite, you know, quite dense, um, inaccessible. You had to like read lots of meaning until you had to. Um, it was kind of no choice. Um, and like some of it was quite playful, um, but a lot of it was, you know, yeah, incredibly serious. And for me, I do want sort of poems to be able to be read sort of on that, like on various different levels. Like you can read into it, absolutely, go for gold. Um, will your meaning be correct? You'll never know. But uh, I think it's also really important to use like accessible language and to use, you know, words that maybe, um, you know, like basically not to use words that are too, um, yeah, complicated and dense. And I want to sort of, it is definitely a book that's denser than my last one. Um, I do think that there are poems that aren't necessarily um, perhaps as accessible as what they could be. But I think that, yeah, it is really important to have language and to have uh, narratives within poems, um, you know, for me, not for anyone else. Do what you want but um for me personally to make sure that people can read the poetry and not only read it and understand it to whatever degree or you know whatever they're bringing to the table when they read it because that's you know also a huge thing is the perspective and experience of the reader and what they bring to it and also to you know be able to kind of either see themselves or um you know find some kind of you know meaning within the work whatever that may be um, so yeah, like, I think that's, that's really, really important. And, um, yeah, in terms of playfulness, uh, yeah, I, it's certainly something that I sort of want to, it's, for starters, it's automatic. I think my playfulness within, within poetry, <coughs> I don't take, I don't take life particularly seriously. Um, but also I think it's something that allows for that accessibility, like it gives people that, uh, you know, it, it makes poetry something that is, that's actually funny as opposed to, God, this is so dry and boring. Like, that's what I don't want. Um, so, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that kind of, that kind of comes across. Um, and I think humour in poetry is something that is quite difficult to do. So hopefully it kind of, um, you know, works and stuff. It does. I was like, yeah. it's like, too bad, it's out now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's incredibly successful. The humour, the well yeah, the humor and the pathos I think are <coughs> equally um successful and that's the um it's 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 incredible really. Um I actually now uh, wanted to touch on um the visual aspect. I'm I'm not sure if anyone's had the um the kind of the pleasure of actually opening up Ray's book yet, but um, also um, congratulations or kudos to um, UK, UQP for um, this <laughs> this absolute horror. Yeah, love it. <laughs> um, yeah, the typesetter, everyone involved. Yeah, um, your beautiful brain that conceived this. It's all. Um, 
it's it's incredible visually it's a visual feast so i definitely highly recommend everyone get your hands on it open it up it's beautiful there's some um, some real um well yeah i found many to be visually thrilling and innovative um mm -hmm. and also like some of kind of painterly and even oh, well, of course like interpretable in many ways you know Ray has this amazing poem that's shaped in a circle sorry shaped in a circle and um i actually um I kind of interpreted it potentially as a as a body part, but yeah. but <laughs> yeah, I said I said no, it's actually supposed to be a coin, but <laughs> it can be a body part, if you whatever you want it to be. You see, isn't that beautiful? So, it, it, um, so many uh, are um, interpretable in a plethora of ways, and not just by meaning or association, but also mm. visually, it's it's incredible, um, and. Um, yeah, so I was actually going to ask, if you don't mind, um, demystifying some of your sort of more experimental practices. I was going to say, if you ask me to read that one that's just going to down the page, no. Um, I'm not going to. I'll have a go. It'll be like interpretive dance or something. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I mean, that one in particular um, is Zalgo text, um, which is kind of this creepy, glitchy text. Um, there's a, a bunch of notes in the back if you want to go and have fun and play around um, with poetry. Uh, there's also poems that uh, include ASCII art, kind of, you know, the, our good good fun times in MSN and chat that we used to have uh, of making pictures. Um, so, yeah, look, I, I think it sort of draws upon my enthusiasm to, um, to play with words and to let, make sure that um, I do definitely take things seriously, but I do think, and I said this to you one time, is that poetry, like every blank page is kind of like a sandbox or a play space or something where it's like, what am I going to do today? Is it going to be weird? Is it going to include like Zalgo text? Is it going to just look like a splotch on the page with some words? Who knows? Um, and so that's something that I enjoy doing, I think, because it does... Um, I don't know, like rebelling in terms of form is incredibly fun. And it's, you know, once again, not what you learn at high school. Um, and yeah, kudos to you, QP, for a, uh, oh, the time setting actually wasn't that tricky from my perspective. It was great. Uh, I'm sure they were like, oh, no, 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 no. Um, but yeah, and also thank you to them, um, like full stop, um, for, you know, having faith in this this collection um, because it is, you know, incredibly uh, difficult for, um, you know, poets to, and, you know, writers in general to have a first book published, far less a second book. Um, so, yeah, it feels it feels amazing to, to have that. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like a, a feather in my cap or something. So, it's, yeah, it's incredibly lovely. So, yeah, thank you to UQP who are hopefully all uh, listening uh, on the Zooms. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know if that answered that properly. It will actually, I was going to say, it ties into what we might want to do at some point well, very soon is actually, playing with text because yeah. I want to invite everyone to help me write a new poem. <laughs> um, you know, I actually... It's fun. Yeah, it would be fun. Um, I oh, actually... Jesse doesn't have a pen. I've got a pen um, in my bag. Um, oh, you this is going to be um, an amazing collaborative um, session. So very exciting. Oh, I love green. Um, uh, and I think, yeah, before we get to our um, yeah. sort of final question, let's do it. Um, Ray has this um, incredible... Maybe I should just pass it over to you. It's going to be a beautiful experience. Beautiful, unhinged, we'll see. Uh, so basically, um, as part of the launch, uh, I'm going to be creating a poem that I'm going to be launching tomorrow on the International Non-Binary People's Day. And it's kind of like Mad Libs, which is, if you don't know, um, I'll be asking you for particular types of words. So, for example, a month, a number, a colour, um, and I'll fill in the blanks of this poem and that will create a poem. Uh as I said, that I will release uh, on the social medias. Um, so if we want to do a trial run, for example, if I shout month, someone will go, oh, March, 
and someone else will go November uh, and I'll write one of them down you won't know which one um, and then once it's all done we have an amazing poem that we've all written together <laughs> Woo! I'm excited. I right. oh, hope this works. All right, folks. All right. Roll up, roll up. Oh, and also uh, I did a um, Twitter poll asking what this poem should be about. Uh, and the options were transness, queerness, Aussie birds, or all of the above. And we have all of the above, Woo! which I gotta say is actually not that difficult to work into a poem. So <laughs> Let's do it. Feel free to yell at me. <laughs> a month. <laughs> yes. The famous month of Galah. <laughs> Next month. March. March. We love it. Thank you. And I was going to say, your turn's coming up. There is an Aussie bird. Uh, a type of tea. Green. Green tea. I love it. A number. 24. Yeah, 24. All right. This feels like a bingo. <laughs> it's a good number. An Aussie bird. Ibis. Ibis All right. We've got an, I was going to say we've got an Ibis. Come on. Come <laughs> on. Uh, another number. 54. 54. Yeah. Uh, a native Australian tree. Gum tree. Gum, gum tree. All right. We're on a roll here. All right, we haven't got long, folks. This torch is almost over. I'm going to ask for these ones. This is repeated. A colour. Pierce. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That sounds like puke. Another colour. Magenta. Magenta. <laughs> Any other? Another colour. Orange. Orange. Another one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone can get a puce pride flag, um, which is spoiler alert that what's happening in this. Uh, it's like I don't know you. Um, another number. Right. Yeah. That's actually perfect. A big number, like massive. T. Small. <laughs> tree, tree, that's very large. Oh, tree good. is very large, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't actually know if that's going to work poetically. Okay, I'm like not that big, like I'm talking like one billion. Six hundred. There we go. That's, that's actually not, that's, you know what? <laughs> yeah, six hundred billion. <laughs> We're a fail, we're a failed bad lip slash bingo host. Folks, we've got one left. It's another Aussie bird. Cassowary. Yes, thank yes. God. <laughs> it's it's over. Now you get to sit there, you get to uh, listen to the spoils of this. Thank you so much. Uh, also, good lord, I do hope uh, no one ever releases a puce. Pride flag. <laughs> um, please enjoy this poem that we all wrote together tonight. <laughs> Beautiful. Breezy day in early March. A cup of green tea, soothing cold hands. 24 ibis lined up on the porch, <laughs> squabbling and preening, feathers rumpled by breeze. 54 pride flags, pendulous from gum tree branches, whipping and spinning. Magenta, orange and purple fabric, whirling in time with wind, bird calls, the beat of my heart. Three deep breaths, eyes closed, head tilted, hands clasped. I'm breathing, thinking of all 600 billion of us in this big expanse of world. People like me, people like you. This doesn't, the cassowary doesn't work, folks. <laughs> a cassowary lands in a fluster of feathers <laughs> on the porch. <laughs> yeah, we might as well have it for a galop on social media. Oh, a big boy. <laughs> That's it's a horror poem. This was supposed to be really, really happy and joyous. <laughs> a cas a, 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 a cassowary 
that is actually a galah, lands in a cluster of feathers on porch steps, unbothered the other birds accept this new acquaintance with ears. <laughs> They're all big boys. <laughs> they all continue preening, squabbling, singing together. We are never alone. Also, I don't really want to hear a cassowary and I was singing together. <laughs> but the conclusion is we are never alone and I love you all. Thank you. <laughs> Wow, congratulations, everyone. <laughs> collective, everyone uh, really deserves some uh, congratulations there. I love um, 600 billion. It, it sort of makes yeah. me think of all of us, as well as all the plants, as well as all the animals. Maybe we all add up to 600 billion. The alternative maybe. was going to be thinking of all three of us. <laughs> <laughs> My drop, leave. <laughs> um, I was going to oh, say, the is amazing. <laughs> um, Thank you so much. Uh, I will let Arthur know when it is up. Um, so that well, I can yeah, share, it, share yeah. this horror of <laughs> the poem with you. No, it was beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think it really um, transcended and I think amazing. Um, we have only a few minutes left today, yeah. but I thought we could just close with um, um, like any sort of final takeaways oh. that you might have that you wanted to share with the audience sort of, um, yeah, in, in regards to yeah. your really, really beautiful book. Um, oh, uh, I was going to say, should I, should I read I Am Myself? Yeah. I love that idea. Yeah. Um, I will read one. It is the last poem in the book. Spoiler alert. Um, that's actually not a thing for poetry, I don't think. Is this spoiler <laughs> alert for poetry? Spoiler alert, it's poetry. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, look, thank you so much for, for being here um, in person as well. Um, I know that it's, you know, kind of a hardcore time with um, all the plagues that are going on. And thank you, of course, to everyone online, which is really, really amazing. Uh, there's so many of you, and I love that so much. Um, and, you know, shout out to Robin in the UK, <laughs> um, and yeah, thank you so much to Avid Freedom. Uh, it's been amazing. It's it's wonderful to be hosted at my faith bookshop. Um, and thank you to Marlo for. <laughs> oh, I'm just doing thanks. I'm like, yeah, let's let's do this. <laughs> I've won an award. Um, no, thank you so much. It's been really lovely to talk to you. Thank you for taking the time and like. Um, just like all the effort that you went to to like prepare way more than I did for tonight, trust me. Um, so thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> and, uh, oh. I'm very lucky. I um, often get to revel in your company every month at our Queer Literature Book Club. Um, so do numerous of us here, and it's it's always a thrill. So thank you. I am the one making silly comments all the time, but yes, thank you. Um, yeah, and I think I was gonna say an obvious thanks to UQP, who I thanked before, but amazing, thank you. It's an incredibly wild ride to to have a second book um, with such a, a cool cover and to have so many beautiful people working on it. Um, you know, Madonna, Aviva, Kathy, Jean, um, and Felicity Plunkett, who was uh, an incredible force in editing this book. So yeah, it's been, oh, loved the book. Um, uh, so this last poem in the book, um, it's kind of is that, um, it's not even a call to action so much as it is a reassurance that this book is for you and also one that um, hopefully you can spot find space in as well. Um, so this is called I Am Myself. I am myself exactly as I am. I am myself as self, but myself in motion, as moon-infused moon quartz and multiverse. Not just the in-between, but the fluidity, the change, and the motion of motion of my prophecy, never forecast or fulfilled. Not just non-binary, but ongoing and changing, nourishing the constant motion, the change, the pleasure, of indecisiveness, of broken winter clock, who's always in time and never on time. Time as construct, colonial gender as construct and constant, 
take clock apart in the sunshine, reflective and reflection, my fluid reflection in your honest queer words, not just queer, but queer as in joyful, not just the present, but the future and the future's future, not just me, but also you and you and you and you. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. <laughs> thank, thank you for beautiful book launch. Oh, and yes, I should say that um, I will be signing books um, at the table uh, near the front door. Do, do you need to do a sign off or anything? No, I was just going to say thank you to everyone. But yes, you stole words right out of my mouth. Love, Ray. Um, they'll be inside by the front door. Um, you can grab your copy at the counter, have a chat to Ray, get it signed. Yes. And there's also little uh, little stickers that I have um, for uh, people who came tonight uh, that you get little stickers uh, for your book. Um, or I don't know, if your body, you can put it anywhere. I don't know. <laughs> do whatever you want. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, high five you.